If there is one bag that I would recommend that you avoid from Hermes, this is it. Hello my friends, I am back with another Hermes ranking video, but today we won't be looking at just any old Hermes bags, but probably the most challenging Hermes bags to find these days, the world of Hermes mini bags, because if it wasn't already difficult enough to get your hands on an Hermes bag, try to find one in a size small enough to look proportionate on a baby and you will have a true mission impossible on your hands. But that doesn't mean we cannot talk about them. So if you'd like to hear my thoughts and my firsthand experience with some of these exclusive and highly elusive bags and find out which are the ones that are worth the money and the weight and which are the ones that you should just gently kick off your wish list, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. I've been doing these ranking videos for a little while now, so if you have watched any one of them, I'm sure you know the drill by now, we'll be using the exact tier maker app that I always use. But if this is your first time tuning in, well, first of all, welcome. And I have a playlist linked down below for you that I have put together with all of my previous videos on it, in case you want to catch up. But let me walk you through the different tiers really quick in case this is your first time. So on top we have Ride or Die. This is the category for bags that I absolutely adore, would highly recommend, and I personally would not want to live without. Then the next category is Great Investment. These are pieces that I do really enjoy. Perhaps they are not the bag for me, or I don't find them to be just 100% perfect, but at the end of the day, I still think that they would be an amazing investment to add to your collection. And when I talk about investment, I don't mean it in a financial sense. I mean that it would be an amazing investment to make into your collection because these are pieces that you would truly get your money's worth out of. You would be able to enjoy them for a lifetime. Then we have Matt. These are the bags that are fine. I personally would not go out of my way to get my hands on them. Then we have Acquire Taste as we get lower down to the bottom of the tier. Acquire Taste, these are pieces that I don't find universally flattering, but I do think that there is a select group of people out there who could potentially enjoy these pieces. And then lastly, we have Avoid. These are obviously bags that I don't particularly care for, and honestly, I think if Hermes discontinued them tomorrow, they would do all of us a huge favor because it would give them more time to focus on bags that are a lot better than these. But these are our categories for today. Now obviously we'll exclusively be focusing on our mass mini bags, but if you'd like to see another ranking video on other mini bags from other luxury houses, I know that Cassie has done an incredible all-encompassing ranking video on other popular mini bags which I will make sure to link down below for you. And without further ado, let's see which one of these Hermes bags are worth the money and which ones are an absolute no-go. Okay, we're starting out with one of the newer mini bag launches by Hermes, the 24-24-21 bag, which I almost said that this was quite a recent launch, but now that I think about it, this bag officially was released towards the end of 2020, which at this point has been over a nine month ago. It's crazy how time flies. But anyway, it's still a relatively new bag to the RMS portfolio. And this was the baby bag addition to the RMS 2424 bag line, which previously came in two different sizes in 35 and 29. And both bags looked very similar. They were the exact same design and ideology. The only difference between the two of them other than the size, of course, is the fact that the bag in size 29 came with a shoulder strap, but in 35, you did not get a shoulder strap with the bag. And even though the sound of a shoulder strap sounds really appealing, the placement of it could not have been any more awkward on the 24, 24, 29. Instead of putting the D-rings that you attach the shoulder strap to on the top of the bag or on the sides, they just sort of put it halfway on the back of the bag, which meant that every time you attached the shoulder strap, the bag leaned forward and it just looked 
kind of a little tipsy. It seemed like it wasn't ready to tilt over any time. So I wasn't a fan of the placement. It was just a little bit not well thought out for the price in my opinion. And I know many of you agree with that who have had a chance to see this bag in person. Not to mention that because this bag is so soft, unstructured and kind of squishy, and interestingly, it widens towards the top rather than towards the bottom. It's not the most flattering look either. I felt that it looked really sloppy on me when I tried it on, regardless of what size I tried it in. So I personally wasn't a fan of this bag in person, even though I loved the idea of it, of it being a more contemporary take on the toolbox bag, which is not a style that you see a lot from Hermes these days but at one point it was one of their most popular bags. It's kind of the reincarnation of the toolbox bag with a Kelly twist. I love the idea. I thought it would be a great casual, everyday, understated bag. Unfortunately, because of this weird shape, it didn't really work on me, but I still appreciate it on people who can pull it off. But of course, Hermes had to launch it in a smaller size just to ride the wave of this mini bag trend for as long as they can. So they launched it in size 21, which I also had a chance to see a little while ago. And it just kind of looked heavy. It didn't feel heavy technically and physically, but aesthetically it just looked heavy and kind of um, out of shape. It almost looked like it was a bag that had stretched out because it had been used for so long. So I wasn't as big of a fan as I thought I would be, and the proportions of this bag definitely did not work for me. But the whole idea and the whole selling point is that this bag comes with a long strap that you can twist and turn to turn this bag into a multitude of different things. So you can make it work as a crossbody bag, as a backpack, as a belt bag, or you just don't have to use the shoulder strap and you can carry it on its own as a clutch bag or as a tiny top handle bag, which I think is really how this bag is best worn as. I think it doesn't really look great as a crossbody bag. It's definitely not the most flattering as a backpack, unless you're really petite and narrow shouldered. And as a belt bag, I can tell you, this is not a piece that would work on anyone. So for the price, there are way too many bots for me and way too many criticisms that I could give. Even though there's nothing like majorly wrong with it, I can see this working for a select group of people. Definitely not for me. Maybe as a clutch bag or as a grab and go bag, I could make it work. But as anything else for the price, I think there are just way too many things that are kind of off with this piece. So for me, this bag is going to be a mat. Just because there is nothing majorly wrong with it, I could see this working for a select group of people. And if I mess through this bag at me, I wouldn't mind keeping it, if you know what I mean. But I would definitely not go out of my way and spend over $8,000 on this piece. Moving on, we have the tiniest Hermes bag creation, which is the so-called Kelly Twilly. Now, depending on who you ask, some people will consider this an accessory, others will consider this a bag. I personally would consider it a bag because it's fully functional. You can actually put things inside. Not a lot, but you can put something in there. And because of the price, I think those definitely qualify this to being a bag. And this is a piece that I picked up probably last summer, so I think definitely over a year ago. And I have recently done an in-depth review on this. So if you have ever contemplated picking up the Kelly Twilly or one of the new takes like the Kelly Doll version of the Kelly Twilly, I would highly suggest that you check out my review on this piece. But long story short, I would put this bag in maybe, I'm kind of thinking either acquire taste or avoid. I'm going back and forth between two, those two categories. I think based on my previous review, I'm gonna go for maybe acquired taste because I think if you are a true Hermes lover and collector, this is a piece that you will really enjoy. But other than that, if you are looking for a piece that you can genuinely use and enjoy on a regular basis, this I don't think is a piece that you'll get your money's worth out of. This next bag, on the other hand, I have very different feelings towards, which is the Bolide 1923 in the mini size. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bolide bag, 
as the name suggests, it's a style that was launched in 1923. And this style of bag was revolutionary at the time because believe it or not, this was the very first handbag that actually featured a zipper on top. And that's what allowed their MS to create a bag in this curved shape. Prior to this, there were no bags that featured this curved shape on top because they would have not been able to close this bag properly. But with the invention of the zipper and RMS implementing it in one of their bags, the Bolid bag was born, which was specifically designed for long road trips and car drivers. And it has been in the RMS portfolio ever since. It has been redesigned and reinvented quite a few times. So you have the original Bolid 1923, which is a little bit more structured. And then you have the Bolid 31, which is a lot softer, a lot more supple, and it just feels like a beautiful, everyday, more casual bag. Whereas the Bolid 1923 could be perceived as a little bit more formal and structured. But this is a style that comes in a bunch of different sizes. Sizes as small as the mini size, which measures just around 19 centimeters. Then your next step up size would be 25. And it goes up to as large as size 45. So if you love this shape, you can add it to your collection in every single size that you could possibly need a bag in. And I am just a huge fan of the Bolide bag in general, but especially of this bag in the mini size. Even though it is quite trendy these days because of its size, it's never going to be a trendy piece, if you know what I mean, because this is a bag that has a shape, a structure, a construction that will never ever go out of style. You can buy this bag today, and as long as this shape and this size works with your proportions, you can use this a hundred years from now, and it's not going to look out of place. I just love this bag. It's simple, functionality first, but it still looks really expensive because of the shape and the way it's constructed. So if you're looking for an amazing mini bag to invest in, the Mini Bolid is a great bag to go for. Moving on, we have another classic from Hermes, their Mini Evelyn, or also known as Evelyn 16. This is a bag that I have recently talked about because it was on my 2021 luxury wish list. And I decided not to pick it up when I had the chance. I have my video linked up here where I explain why. So if you want to find out more and see more shots of what this bag ended up looking like on me, I would highly suggest that you check out that video of mine. But basically the Evelyn bag was designed by Hermes many months ago to become the best friend of any horse riders out there that love the heritage of Hermes because this was almost designed as a take on a traditional gym bag. The idea of this bag is that all of your equestrian essentials, probably other than your boots, should fit into these bags. They're completely liningless, and there are even perforated holes on these bags, just to make sure that there is enough airflow if you throw something sweaty or something wet in there, which of course ended up being that large age that this bag is known for which really serves a function. It wasn't necessarily a decorative element. It was designed so things just don't go smelly in your really expensive bag, to be honest. I know a lot of people love showing off that age. If you ask me and how I would style this bag, I would go down the traditional route and I would have the age facing me and then the closure hanging on the outside. But if you look at some of the more recent RMS campaigns, even they have started putting the H on the outside just because it has become so synonymous with the RMS brand. So, you know, the Evelyn is a great, easy grab and go bag if you find a size that you feel you like and it works for you and with what you have going on, then I think it's a great bag to add to your collection. So in my opinion, it would be considered a great investment because I know for a fact that this is a bag that you would truly get your money's worth out of. If you're looking for a casual, easy to use, fuss free bag that, let's be honest, is beautifully made. Next up on our list is the Mini Kelly 22, which has to be the bag that I get the most questions on, probably because this bag has become nearly impossible to find. For a good reason, I have to say, because I find this bag to be perfection when it comes to proportions, 
the way it looks, the way it feels in terms of practicality. I think it is just an incredible piece by the brand. And they did a fabulous job redesigning this about six-ish years ago when this bag relaunched. There was once upon a time a Kelly 20 without that two behind it. That was actually much truer to the proportions of the original Kelly bags, whereas the Kelly 22 is completely different in terms of the shape, the structure. It just was very different from every other Kelly bag, other than maybe the next one coming up, but it's a lot more streamlined. It feels a lot more contemporary than some of the other Kelly bags. And if you want to find out why, if you want to see mod shots, if you want to learn about why I'm so passionate about this bag. I will link some of my more in-depth reviews down below for you on this piece. But honestly, the Mini Kelly 22, in my opinion, it's a no-brainer. It has to be a ride or die. So as I said, I would have a difficult time comparing the Mini Kelly 22 to any other Kelly, but the Kelly Pochette or the Mini Kelly. Some people call this the Mini Kelly and then the Mini Kelly 22, the Mini Kelly 2. I personally call this bag Kelly Pochette, but if you ask Hermes, they'll tell you something different each time. The best way of describing what piece you're looking for, if you're thinking about adding the Kelly Pochette to your collection, is to say that you're either looking for the Kelly Pochette or the Mini Kelly without the shoulder strap, because even though there are quite a few differences between the two styles, the main one being that the Kelly Pochette does not come with a shoulder strap, but the 22 does. Other than that, the Kelly Pochette has a completely different handle, a different structure, and it is slightly bigger, not only in length, but it also feels wider and more spacious. So if you're looking for a small Kelly bag that is going to give you a little bit more space than the Kelly 22 would, that is not quite as tight and structured, the Kelly Pochette might be the back for you. This style has been offered to me over the years in a couple of different colors and leathers, but I'm still on the hunt for the perfect combination. So for me, I'm going back and forth between great investment or ride or die. I think honestly at this point, I would say great investment. I just like the Kelly 22 a tiny bit more because of the shoulder strap, but at the same time, I love the Kelly Pochette because it's just a little bit more user-friendly because of the added space. So for now, it's going to be a great investment, but just know that it's right on the borderline between being a ride or die and a great investment. Next up, a bag that was really popular when it launched, but it's going to be my unpopular opinion, that this bag is Hervandes. You guys know by now that if there's one line by Hermes that I dislike with a passion, it is the Lindy group of bags. I know some people love them, I know many people would disagree with me, but I personally don't find anything likable about the Lindy bags. They to me just kind of look like Hermes took all these fun and creative elements and threw all of them against the wall to see what sticks and a lot of it stuck, so they were just like, okay, let's release this bag. But in my opinion, it looks incredibly awkward. From the weird short little side handles through the shape of the bag, the closure that is extremely difficult to open and close, to the side pockets and that weird band that connects the two side handles, which you need, otherwise you would not be able to hold onto the bag in any shape but it looks so strange. It looks kind of like something that was not supposed to be left on a bag. You know, when you buy a chair or if you go to a museum, let's say, and there's a chair on display, they usually have that strip of tape or something over the chair just so you cannot sit on it. That's exactly what that strap on the Lindy looks like. It looks like something that was supposed to be cut off, even though it was intentional. I don't know whose intention was to put that bag in kind of this tray jacket, but that's the idea. The Lindy is just not a bag for me. I have many friends who love this bag, who own this bag, who have been trying to convince me that they love this bag for many years. But I believe if this bag was not done by Hermes, people would be hating on it from every single angle. So for me, the Lindy is just a no-go in 
any shape and in any size. But if I was forced to pick one, I would likely go for the mini size, just because you don't have that weird short band connecting the two handles on this one. The band is a little bit longer, so it's not as disproportionate, because the idea is that you can use that band to put this back crossbody, but I can tell you that I will never consider or recommend this bag to anyone. So if there is one bag that I would recommend that you avoid from RMS, this is it. And last but not least, let's discuss a really rare size of Birkin, which is the smallest size that the Birkin bag comes in, which is size 20. This is a size that is currently only available in some limited edition designs. One of them being the Faborg style, which launched a couple of years ago at this point, and since then it has been released in many different colorways. The newest one coming up, which I think should be launching towards the end of the year, is going to be this exact same bag, but in some more neutral sort of white tones that represents the Faborg store in Paris in the winter. So. If you love unique bags and if you've been looking for a wide bag from RMS, which are nearly impossible to come by, just know that the Faborg bag will be coming in white matched with some beautiful neutral ivory beige shades. But this bag is not only unique because it is inspired by the facade of the Faborg store and it has every single detail created on the back to the dot. But it's also in a size that is otherwise not available from Hermes, which is size 20. I've had a chance to see this bag in person on display. All I can tell you is that this bag I cannot use the word small for because it's even smaller than you would think. Technically, of course, it measures 20 centimeters, just like the Mini Kelly 22. But because you have the top handles, because you have all these decorative elements, it feels a lot smaller. Or it's possible that just because I'm used to seeing Birkins in larger sizes and that's what I associate the Birkins with, it just seems smaller to me, but it looked absolutely tiny. But if you are looking for a small Birkin, one that is a standout piece, one that is a true conversation starter, this is definitely something that you can ask your home store about. So. I mean, I feel like it would be a sin to say that this bag is a meh just because it's so beautifully crafted. And what other brand has a bag literally inspired by their store that features pretty much every single detail, detail of their store? That for me, I think this has to be... I'm going back and forth between great investment, number one, because this would be not only a great investment into your collection, but this would also be a great financial investment because this is so limited. If you ever wanted to sell this at a profit, this is something that you absolutely could. So I think, yeah, let's just stick with great investment just because it's a great financial investment. And if you're looking for something unique from Hermes that might break the bank, but it will sure be a show-stopping piece. I mean, this is the Hermes bag for you to see. And this is it, my friends. This completes today's video ranking some of the tiniest, most exclusive mini bags by Hermes. I hope you enjoy this. I would love to hear in the comment section what you have to say about my ranking. Do you agree with this order? Would you rank these bags in a different order? what would be yours, I would love to know. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.